rise and shine, pour yourself a cup of coffee, and tune in to Good Morning Aurora. News, weather, and really cool interviews, Monday through Friday from 8 to 9 a.m. Time is now 8, a, 8.02 a.m. You're listening to and watching Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. It's Friday. Hope that you guys are um, having a great day and having a fun morning. Um, it's, been a, it's been a heck of a week. Heck of a week. But everything is doing well today, and I'm all right, and uh, I know my guest is all right. We hope that you guys are well, safe, blessed, and having a beautiful morning out there. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping, and not only that, um, I, you know, I don't know if y'all know this now, Aurora has weather now. See, 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 Aurora didn't have that before, you know, so now we got a daily weather report, and I don't know if you guys saw the daily weather report, but we got two more days of these 80 temps, and then we're going to get into the 60s, and then... 50 something by Sunday something like that like 53 or something like that anyway I got a great guest today my guest is Sammy J Mr. Salvatore Hall uh dear friend he's back with a brand new book he is the author of 24 rungs and ASMR journey to recovery you got it there it is yep on uh you can find it on Amazon all that how you doing I'm doing well it's good to see you you got talking yeah yeah get Doing real well, right? And I'm now you hear the difference, here. though, right? See? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Happy right. to be here. Just give me the mic. Okay, no problem. Here All we right. go. Okay, but you can't rap. Okay, <sighs> not we. We can't rap. Fair enough. We can't rap. Fair no, enough. No, Fair no, enough. No. I, okay. I learned. I learned that. I learned that in like the fourth month of doing this. That's good. That's good. You know, we yeah. give the people what they want, and it's just knowledge. That's yeah. what we're here for. Because you know, I like rapping, and I would rap sometimes, and then. But, <laughs> all right, so, yeah, it's like uh, people listening with their kids and all that. Like, I thought this was news. It is. It is. It is. Um, Gloria Gerardo, good morning uh, to you, and it's Friday morning. Happy Friday. Have a blessed day today and a weekend too. Amen. Thank you. Right back at you, Gloria. Saul Olivas, good morning. Hope everyone has a great weekend. Thank you, Julia Lindbergh, Aisha Saxon. Good morning to all of you, great people as well. Um, we got the news that you love and everything. Before we get into the discussion, though, how have you been? I've been doing really well. I've been okay. doing well. How are you, man? I'm all right, man. I'm all right. You know, I'm all right, man. Yo, I'm all right. Dude, I know. I'm it's, getting there, man. I'm getting there. It's a blessing to talk to you. It is. Man. I, I, same here, man. Same here. Yo, you my man, man. You're, you're, you know, this is the thing about this that's crazy. Uh, I'm interviewing a friend today, for those who don't know. Um, so it's a hell of a different interview. But, <sighs> yeah, man. You know what? My life, um, I tell you. I tell you, uh, I had to start liking life again. Yep. I had to start liking life again. And I don't know. The thing is, uh, so I wasn't sleeping or eating for a real long time. Uh, and uh, for many years, I've been an early bird. That's been my whole thing. And I've been able to do all the things I do on a daily basis and accomplish all I accomplish because I just get up early and I start early. Um. And because I'm a morning person, I always have a nice morning. I've always had nice mornings. But since my dad passed, I haven't had that. How like, I, I haven't, like, it's just not, right? Well, I, I think that you're allowed that. I think if, if we're looking at this beautiful river out there, if all of a sudden a giant rock comes in, it's going to fall. Right. Cause and effect will hit that water, and it's going to make a big splash. Right. You've had a huge splash. And you're doing all this service for people. So you're used to carrying a giant load or like Atlas style with it on your back. Well, your big pillar, unfor not unfortunately, but has this reality has changed with him and you. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I, I wake up in the morning, man, and it's, it's just fucking blah. But you the, know, it's just so like, it's just not, it's not the, you know what? You know, it takes me so much to get happy now. Mm -hmm. 
that's the thing. It's like, and I feel, in a way, I feel kind of lost because, like, I don't know. It was, it's like, I don't know how the hell I was happy. What was I happy about in the first place? I mean, I, I know, right? But now I'm like, man, sometimes I just can't wait to get back home. It's made, like, every aspect of my life, like, that much more difficult. Like, there's, no, like, everything is 38 more times difficult than it was. And and it's just, it is, it's just mind-numbingly, like, depressing. It's It's just. Of course. But, like, as we look out there, back to that reference, if that giant, if that giant ball hit the, you know, hits the water, the water is going to recede. You see what I'm saying? So like the feelings that you're having right now are totally, you know, uh, uh, you know, agreeable or understandable. So if, if this is what you need, like the people watching this, the people who are, are here and, uh, the, the people who are, are here doing this work with us, you know, there's a reason for it. So whatever, how do we know? We never know. No one's come back in our lifetime Okay, and once that body's gone, when we leave the body, it's obviously gone somewhere. Okay, and we may never come back as that same person, but there's no way that and some of that energy is not absorbed, or that it's not within you now and in your family and all this work that you're doing here. Well, how else could we have come together over uh, a terrible thing happened to our country, and we try to keep some marketing going or whatever, and we connect, and now this is a voice for people. What do we say from the jump? A voice for the voiceless. What are we really gaining from this? You're hurting. Rightfully so. But the, obviously the water will recede. So if you got to go out and use that grass after that happens, dude, it's going to be 100% saturated, 60%, 40%. If right now you're saying you're learning to love life again, then that means the water is receding. And you can absorb it. Never will it go away. Never. Yeah, I know. It will never. <sighs> I know, man. And then you lean on people. You lean on this. This is what we're doing. This is inspired. This is action. Because there's not there's not going to be great change. And it's not about silly political change and things like that. This is about how we look at each other. An empathetic nature for that time someone cuts you off in traffic. All this stupid stuff that we talk about. Just you and me on the phone. Yeah. But like we, you have to use that as strength now, and you can use it as strength. We can use it as strength. Yeah, I have been, man. Um, that's the. I think. Uh, I think that's the thing that that has been. Um, it's like you know, using the word positive is kind of strange, but like, I think that is the the one positive aspect I've I've gained out of it. Like, uh, you know, it's definitely the worst thing that ever happened in my entire life. But uh, I have to say that uh, that's happened before in my life. So, you know, I, I'm, you know, my heart's calloused enough to keep going. But at this point in time, I feel like it has been, like I've been using the sadness and grief as motivation. Man. I, I really have. Man. I, know. I really have. Because cause I'm proud that uh, I, uh, you know, my dad... Uh, he got to see everything I'm doing, you know, and like I would tell him all the stuff I'm into and and he would be like, man, just, you know, you, you're kicking butt and taking names like keep it up, man. And uh, so it's it's been uh, it has been a uh, it's been motivating. It has been I, I've been like I was telling you, it's just been in the past couple of weeks, yeah. maybe the past month, like where I've been like, you know, okay, I'm, I'm I back on, like I, I can, can I can yeah. ride this horse like, you yeah. know, like. You know, I'm the rodeo has to go on. Yeah, right, right. But. It does. I know, I know. <laughs> right. I got to do these eight seconds. So, but it's like if you, God forbid, when people get injured or whatever and they go to therapy, it's just like sometimes in that broken part, like for a shoulder, all the pictures that I've had to deal with, like sometimes they get this injury or it's like, oh my God, everything is done. I'm done. Who I was as a person, my identity as a pitcher, a baseball player, blah, 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 is there now. This thing is not anymore. Like now, this part of you that is you, that's been your strength, like everything is not in the healing. You know what I mean? People go two ways. They let it linger and they have, oh, I have an injury for 50 years. Or when they got hurt, 
the muscle surrounding it, the rotator cuff, not just the injury, starts to get strong. So right now, you can't just roll out of we can't just roll me too, bro. Like right. you can't just roll out of bed in the same way. But if we work slowly, go back to the stuff you learned in the military, like you know what I'm saying? Like we go small. I have to do it. Like I'm trying to do that with just I'm not making the bed, getting the stuff like the dumbest <laughs> stuff. Yeah. That, like you know yeah. what I mean? It's so easy to move by, but then it's like, okay, well then if I'm slacking in those other areas and I can't I can't say it's someone else's fault. Yeah. It's a mess, that's you know? the yeah, that's the uh well, that's the other thing about it too, which uh I've been dealing which was a little bit more forward leaning on me. Like like I it's true. You know what? Here's the thing. Uh man, I I don't want to I don't want to stay here, right? So no, we'll I'm, get out of here. You know, I, I, I see the, you know, we got to get off this off ramp. It's okay. But, but, uh, uh, I've never been a guy in my normal life. Like, I've always kind of liked danger. I'm yeah. not, yeah. you know, I, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm not bothered by the, yeah, the, you're not fear, you're fearless. You're, but, yeah. but with this, I, I see the futility of if I stop, like, there is no, I can't, right? Yeah. I got a 10-year-old. I know. There is no off-ramp. There is no, I don't have enough time to grieve. There's just not enough. Like, I got shit, like, the, the, it, all of, like, the tidal wave is coming. I got to be on this surfboard. I know. And... I think that that has been the, um, uh, that's what's allowed me to keep going because like all of this stuff started before I was already doing these things, you know? So now it's like, I'm getting back in the ship and all of the stuff is still here. Like, like autopilot, you know what I'm saying? Of course. Right. It's like, yeah, we were going good, but now there's turbulence coming. I have to switch autopilot off. I got to be manually doing this now. And that is motivating. That is motivating. Like, that's the point where I, that's where, like, that's when I start leaving the house. Mm -hmm. Because I'm like, okay. There's no choice. Like, yo. Yes. You know, grief don't pay the bills, you know. But, you know, one thing to think about is, and I've been trying to think it, is, like, the lion mindset of, like, not like, oh, cliche, lion-hearted, like, rah, I'm strong. It's like, no, 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 like, the actual life of a lion. Like, he has a pride. You know, he has a a lioness and cubs and all these different things that he has. And it's like, he can never not be a lion. Like, he's going to go out for the hunt. Family's hungry. Hey, what do you want to eat? Oh, it's always, I'm sure the lioness is the same as the Mm -hmm. human women of like, I don't know, what do you want? Like, okay, I'll go get something. But that being said, he wakes up. He was up late last night protecting the pride. He's got to wake up early. And these people got to eat. Yeah. Now he's got to go kill some jackals or some antelope whatever he's got to get now this dude has no choice and then all of a sudden scratch Mm -hmm. the first time he goes for a bite boom he's hurt he's bleeding he's still got to eat still got to eat and it's just like that primal nature which we are you know what i'm saying and and right now as men like we have to wear a lot of hats it's not like we could just be tough all the time like we're expected in relationships to be much more sensitive you know, we have to do much more child rearing. We have to do much more of the work that was predominantly, which is a good thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is because, you know, the, when there's a merged gender role or whatever the case may be, however anyone sees that, just like what in in a relationship where there's balance of work and things, like you know that that could be beneficial. But again, where you're sitting right now, it's just like you come back to your pride, us, your son, mm-hmm. and it's like we're gonna stitch you up. We're gonna you're going to give you what you need. You know what I'm saying? And it's okay to be a little vulnerable yeah. because you'll be surprised. I feel like when they, people know not everyone comments on things, not everyone does that because they just, you know, don't want to be out there. But I bet you touch more people than you think. I bet, you know, people who are kids that step all across this or your son says what your dad does, you know what I'm saying? That could inspire them to write this story. I mean, I've been seeing some things on, you know, different things up and down with people moving around the world, you know, human osmotic pressure in these Mm -hmm. things. Like, you know, there's a lot out there, but like the second someone stumbles on GMA, the wrong click, and it's a different GMA, 
and they see some dude, and then they research, and then they look into this, and then they start seeing people you've interviewed. Are you kidding me? That impact could be in 40 years, could be 10 years, could be this. So it's just at the end of the day, you're not nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, none of this is for naught. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you, you are doing something. So the motivation exists whenever you want it. The energy is there whenever you want it. Now, t- tomorrow I might be low. I'm like, Curtis, man, I'm feeling low too. Can you build me up? You, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But it's just that energy exists, and that lion's got to eat. And through generation on generation on generation, who's still the king of the jungle? The lion. Right. So no one's taken him down yet. Yeah, I feel uh, it's, um, you know, it's well, it's I, I was never going to give it up. I was never going to give it up. But but uh, but now it's definitely like therapy. Yeah. Like now, like doing this and, yeah. and showing her like now it's like it's just. Uh, yeah. Like now it's a I don't know, man, I'm about to get it tattooed or something, you know, like it's it's like it's like therapy now. Um, well, look at look at what we did. You know what I'm saying? It was, you know, an idea that <laughs> that what? There was everything was going wrong. All mm-hmm. marketing, all things were shot. Here's a conversation of what the the main narrative would be like. Oh, you people, you shouldn't like each other. You shouldn't like him. You shouldn't like him. You shouldn't like him. What what's that? That's nothing. Mm-hmm. What's actually happened is this: people of this generation saying some of us, anyways, are saying like, no. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna say our grandparents were the greatest generation. Okay, that's great. Like, well, now we are. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like now we are. And unfortunately, you know, our, our parents are getting to that age. What are, you, what are we talking about? Like, you see it all over Facebook. You see what's going on in the world. You know what I'm saying? It's heartbreaking. But we have to exist. We have to steward this generation because there's a lot of confusion. Right. There's a lot of confusion, you know. And, you know, some people have to just simply say, okay, okay, we'll, we'll take these reins with everybody. But, like, now let's all talk. For real, for real. Like, talk where everyone talks. Right. Like, we're not going to hate. We're not going to do it anymore. It's not going to happen. Yeah, man. Yeah. I uh, I don't know, man. I needed to. Uh, well, I appreciate. Like I said, man, it's, it's having you on a show is different. You know, you're not yeah. just some, you know, nobody's just some guest on this show. That That's never been the case. But, nah, I no, know. I appreciate it, man. I it's, appreciate it. Because I just, uh, I don't know, man. I Like I said, I'm I'm getting there, man. I'm getting there. I'm yeah, almost back on my saddle. My boss asked me the other day too, and it was so like, it wasn't embarrassing, but it was more like, I guess it was, it was more, it was more of a like an emotional kick in the balls. Yeah. Like, um, I was um, <clears throat> so he gave this speech. Uh, uh, there was this housing 101 event at Wesley United Methodist Church. This was just the other day, mm-hmm. and he was speaking um and before i saw him walking into the church right and i'm parking so i'm i'm coming up and everything and he was like uh how you feeling and i was like all right and uh he gave me this look like he knew i was bullshit like he knew you know what i'm saying he was he didn't even and and i appreciate that because like like he let me front you know what i'm saying absolutely he let me front without prying because, you know, right. He, he just let yeah. me, he let me front. Yep. And he, he gave me this look. He was like, he was like, yeah, all right. Yeah. And he let me front and then he just let me do my thing. And, and I felt so phony. Right. Yeah, I, I felt so phony about it. But after that, he gave me a hug and shit. And, but I appreciate that he didn't like pull my thread at that moment you know what i'm saying because i had no i because i was running on empty i really was you know i'm in like and it's just small things like that that do make me like just be able to continue and keep it in your back you know what i'm saying yeah because like because i you know it was mad people there i know you know so he just let me front man and and i felt so phony about doing that because it's that's just really not me and i don't try to be that kind of person with people i know you could tell me on the side but but um it's it's really rev- it's it means a lot when somebody like knows your little trick, yeah, yeah, absolutely, and uses it on you, yeah. And so that's what I'm saying. Like I had to like, I had to get out of there. I was like, you know what, man, this is just insane right now. But I mean, I, 
I did my job successfully. Of course. No, the no, time no, is 821. <laughs> well, that's what we have to do, though. But, I mean, and that's the, the why they say there's so much nonverbal communication between people. Yeah. Because that's real. Like, you know, there was a, a whole conversation there in just a hug and a hi and a letting you be. Like, he knew, you knew, somewhere up here, you know what I mean? Your souls understood each other to yeah. be like and that's and that's what i think i think that's what will make everything better yeah I'm like i don't there's no big idea yeah that's the thing it's, it, <laughs> that's mean, well yeah that like it's the because what you need to help you may not be therapy you, you yeah. may not need to sit on the couch you I may don't. not need to get a clinical diagnosis you might just you might just need to go buy some water like you know what I'm it saying? could be any whatever it is you might just need that just to continue maybe you just need to get out of here to go home and cry and just think if we all did that at the store, if we did that, like, every person that we met, that kind of, you know what I'm saying, ripple effect of, right. like, those little drops. We talk about a huge drop that now, you know, is this big whole ordeal, and we have to deal with it. You got to come water, in closer. Yeah. And, well, like, if it falls in and the, and the water recedes, mm. it's like if we start dropping little, pedal, little pebbles in everyone else's pond, because, dude— we all have this little pond inside of us. Some days it's rocky. Some days it's chill. Right. Some days it's not. Everyone else are pebbles in that. Like Lupe Fiasco makes a, a nice metaphor on that in some of his songs. And it's always stuck with me. He's like, you know, make ripples like the tops of still ponds. Like that's right. just it. Like it's this little one and then it expands. Little one and expands. Little one and expands. Like, and if drips come out of a faucet for a lifetime, like, you could fill the whole tub. Yeah, You know, and that's all we can be. We are mostly water anyways. The body cut position, so let's be real. Right. Um, Dora Sanchez Soto is here. Good morning. Dora Shannon Cameron's here. Good morning, Shannon. Shannon Cameron's our dear friend. She's executive director of the Aurora Area Interfaith Food Pantry. Get to know them and donate if you can. If you have any, because uh, I be doing it. I've been doing it a lot. The um, the fridge underneath Indiro, I can't think of the name at the moment. Aurora Community Fridge Project, whatever it is. But you know, that's another thing, though, too. Well, like, I, you know, cans of beans I don't eat anymore. I don't just throw that away. I donate that. So that's what that's your job today. Donate that. Why not? Um, grief is consuming. Your feelings are struggling. Sir. Thank you very much, Shane. I appreciate it. Salo leave us uh, mourning the life of someone we love. Takes a lot from us, and we are never prepared for it. Takes time. Thank you, my dear man. Uh, good to see you, Salo. Jamie Downey is here. Good morning, Jamie. Norma Peterson's here. Good morning, Norma. BTP, Brent Jimenez. And Aisha Saxon, thank you for your transparency. No problem, Aisha. I appreciate you guys. All right. Um, we're here to talk about, you got a book, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <it's>, uh, <laughs> we're supposed to be talking about your book. No, 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 no. That's that's uh, the whole point of writing, though, honestly. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, it, there's no, you don't write, you know, I've never written to, for the, just the sheer being of like, oh, writing a book. Because it was a very right. daunting situation. It's always been this. Um, you know, connection, I think, to that extra, you know, call it ESP, you know, right. it's, it, it, there has to be, there's something that fuels this, this life, you know, something fuels it. And there's a constant flow of information that's going on. And I feel that, you know, <laughs> the way we absorb knowledge could always be expanded and it's rarely sought after, you know, it's just like, oh, well, if I want to try something new, I have to take a class on it. And it's just like. Yo, just do a tutorial once right. in a while. Like, you'll be good. Like, right. you could probably be really good at something you never thought you could be good at. Absolutely. You the know, world is filled with people who just picked up the guitar. Oh, my gosh. Right? I mean, like I'll learn later. But. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, and, and that's just, it has to be this part of life. And and I think we get caught in depression on, like, wanting, needing more. Mm -hmm. You know, we've, like, stunted ourselves and hated that, that urge for more. And then we, we don't quest for more maybe in a job, so it turns into... Uh, drinking too much or cigs or like mm -hmm. you know stuff that is not all bad or that is bad and nothing you know you could work out too much you could eat too healthy and as well in a sense right like right. you can you can do extremes of all these but the balance is the ultimate goal you know on a mm -hmm. planet moving through the you know the universe here spinning you know what i mean like finding balance is difficult in your brain when you're literally not ever still right you see what i'm saying like like and so our cells are in constant motion so that's where it comes back down to this, like, okay, there's there's got to be some sound healing that's there. Like, some all our senses probably provide some healing. So, like, for 24 Rungs, the, the audio book, it just got, actually, just got picked up on Spotify. Weirdly. Okay. Yeah. So Congratulations. Thanks. Yeah. Big so stuff. So that came on there, and that 
which was done here in Aurora at mm-hmm. Gremlin Studios, shout out to Gremlin, has a certain megahertz level behind mm-hmm. the words with certain sounds that are meant to invoke an actual feeling, like a tactile feeling, mm-hmm. because people who, you know, or we all go through times where we might rely too heavily on a vice, and it's just like, okay, that vice is, I've been, not that I have to, that there's a problem or that there's any, I just need to get off that vice a little bit, find something else. Right. Sometimes it's hard to create that change because you need the feeling. It's the SIG. It's the, the taste of the booze or just going to get it, the booze or going to get the drug. Mm-hmm. So you have this feeling that hits and then the dopamine release. So if you could create that dopamine release without this chemical and just invoke that, you know, you, I'm not saying that's good, but that could save you from going and you know relapsing on yeah. something yep. it, it just maybe in a second because you don't there was there's not many options you can go and get like super super heavy help and like go check but not everyone can do that or are ready to admit that they need that and they might not need that they just need to like okay i'm just gonna have a uh some not 15 pieces of pizza i'm just gonna have a couple pieces of pizza but like mm-hmm. i need to prepare my brain and my body to like catch up to that thought right it's like we go like, oh, I need to stop this. I need to get healthy again. And I was like, bro, your body, you've been living away for like 10 years. Like, don't make yourself feel like you have to be something because you saw it in a magazine or someone right. posted some picture right. or whatever the case is. So with that, you know, it, it, you know, it goes into the ASMR realm, which has just like everything has this whole, you know, uh, kind of subculture to it. But I think there's a positive aspect to it, like a vibrational healing of like, that feeling of tingles or when you hear the rain and, and this audiobook has those sounds specifically to go along with the words so that, you know, if you want to do something big, like, oh, I have to get healthy. I want to lose weight. I want to do something. I want to make more money, whatever the case is. You might not have accomplished anything huge in a long time, meaning like you didn't accomplish anything there's no been big event that that people are saying a good job for you Mm -hmm. so that big thing might seem too daunting but if you start in like oh here's some silly book i could just listen to well now there's 24 rungs now in that empty area of your brain that's like i haven't the accomplishment sector if you will Mm -hmm. is super low okay well not many people could say they read a book recently and it's like, or listen to a full book and then like got something out of it. Well, if you just listen to this, that'll make you kind of feel good. It's, it's you know, 24 poems as they're easy to listen to with cool sounds behind it. Okay. You just added a little fuel to your like accomplishment sector. Right. So then the next task of like, oh, I have to smoke before I leave or I have to do these things. Like I don't have to, I have a little more self-worth. I'm doing something. I'm gaining knowledge. I've learned some new vocabulary, some new coping skills, whatever the case may be. So you know, obviously when you have those kinds of things, you're not getting people like sharing it all the time. Like when you're posting, you know, when you have a book in that realm. So, Mm -hmm. um, it's nice to see, you know, Spotify picking it up, but, um, yeah, I do have a, a a new book that a Kindle book that's out called sentient coaching that just dropped the other day. So it's Uh, been a fun little journey. All right. We're going to go to a quick news break and then we're going to come back and talk about sentient coaching. Uh, The time is 8.29 a.m. Thank you, guys. Good morning to all of you great people out there. Karina Suarez Darden, good morning. Uh, Cindy Morales, good morning. Carolyn Dreiber, sure, good morning. Maria Saltajeri, good morning to you. And Tracy Duran is here, good morning to all of you great people. Um, Brett, go ahead and give us a couple pieces of news, young man. The time is 8.30. Okay, the Everyday Heroes Breakfast is happening on Friday, April 28th from 7 to 8.30 a.m. at the Briscoe Community Center. It is a celebration of scouting and its impact on the community. It's hosted by Ottawa District 3 Fire Council, the Boy Scouts of America. And it, it's recognizing honorees from Avoy. The guest speaker is Patrick Perez, he's an Avoy native, as well as a former Kane County Sheriff. He was a sheriff from 2006 to 2014. This Saturday from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., the 2023 Community Cleanup Service Project is happening. It will be at the Cole Center on 100 
one West Illinois Avenue in the beautiful city of Aurora, of course. And the volunteers are needed. If interested, contact Community Cleanup at foxmetro.org. All right, thank you very much. Uh, also, real quick, two other pieces of information. Uh, so we, um, uh, I would like you guys, if you are f- friends and fans of this show, go to Facebook, and there's a page called Compañeros en Salud. Compañeros en Salud is a, um, it's a uh, group of um, great people from all different parts of uh, life and all different organizations here in Aurora, and they all come together to give out resources. Compañeros en Salud in Spanish means partners uh, in health, and uh, I'm part of that group. Uh, I represent the Neighbor Project, so there's a whole lot of good information that can help everybody, especially seniors. Um, But uh, I got two pieces of news to tell you guys about, then we're going to get back to our conversation with our friend Salvatore Hall and talk about sentient coaching. Uh, The first is free glucose testing. Free blood sugar screenings are available from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Wednesdays, first come, first serve basis at Rush Copley's Diabetes Center. If you need help monitoring your blood sugar, please stop by. For more information, you can call 630-898-3649. That number again is 3, or excuse me, 630-898-3649. And next is Walk with the Doc, Educate, Exercise, and Empower. Um, This is sponsored by VNA Healthcare. Fox Valley Park District and Rush Copley Healthplex. Come walk with us every second and fourth Saturday of the month, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, this provider led group is a fun and safe place to go for a walk, learn about health, and meet new friends. The event is free and all are welcome. Um, you got any questions? You can call 630 892 4355. The number again is 630 892 4355. All right. Time is 833. So, sentient coaching. Yes. What's it all about? How does one sentiently coach or coach sentiently? Well, I have been in the coaching sphere as being a player, you know, and then coach pretty much my, my whole life. And it has to come from a state of humility. It's almost... Because um, you're a baseball coach. Correct. Okay, right, right. Correct. And it's, you know, it's difficult to share when you're like in the midst of coaching these things that I've gathered over the years because it's mm-hmm. like... You're out there and you can, you know, something can go wrong. Nothing is perfect right. within this sphere. There's, <laughs> there's a lot, but nothing is perfect. Right. And, and, and so you see, you see the good, the bad, and the ugly of youth sports, right? Mm-hmm. And there's not many people, um, you know, in this current sphere of, of travel ball specifically who have seen a lot of ups and downs, having taken teams from 8U to 18U, you know, two or three times. It's, mm-hmm. you know, it's really an interesting to see and, and seeing a lot of success, you know, where you have uh, groups of parents that have stayed together and get through the whole social part of it and right. the jealousies and the whose kid is better, whose kid is this, who's playing, you know, all those things where at the end I've, I've seen just, you know, I, I'll put it like this. I was in the middle of a game, and I'm not going to say that the teams or where they're from, but there was a team from one area, and there was another team from another area. They could be considered different, mm-hmm. right? And the parents themselves, the kids were just having a great time playing, no issues whatsoever. And then the parents kind of started to get, you know, you started to see this narrative going on of, you know, this descent mm-hmm. that's happening, and it's like, literally had to stop the game dead. I'll never forget this. Like, and like stop the game dead. I'm like, I'm not supposed to be the adult here. I'm supposed to coach these kids. Right. But if we don't show a better example, what's going to be better? What are we going to teach them? Like, you, you're you supposed to look at someone and judge them? Right. Is, is that what we're teaching? Is that what it is? And if that's what it is, like, I'm checking out. Like, that's not how we're going to be. Right. No, we're going to be in a little different. So the whole idea of sentience is, you know, I've been, you know, there's a the whole AI situation that's going on, right? And that probably be for a whole nother podcast, but it's it's a very interesting phenomenon that if people, you know, it's it's a big part of your life if you don't know already. But anyways, in uh, that aspect, right? Mm-hmm. It, it it could be very easy to be swayed. You know, just think of look how social media is with. You never know if it's a bot or if it's a person. Like, there's all this difference. But the true sentient nature of humanity, you know, is precious. Mm-hmm. And I feel if it's not spoken to, it can obviously be lost. And, you know, I, I wrote this book 
utilizing that mindset of like we have to be sentient in every moment here because right. it's different when you're it's your own kid and then when it's someone else's kid and if you're not prepared like it hits you like a brick wall and you make an ass of yourself right. like in front of people and then it's hard to come back from that you know it's hard when you're a coach or a dad and you freak out i've done it you right. know what i'm saying as a That's coach get not tossed, the guy like, who's supposed to be freaking out i had an awesome right. travel ball coach who had the best one-liners and you know doc and like you know i tell a guy he's got skin like an onion and you're tossed you know mm -hmm. well like some not everyone thinks that's funny when you're clever right you know parents pay good money to be on a team and it's like yeah so this book has in it you know very so we say you volunteer for the park district and you're coaching you know, baseball. This is a baseball one. I have other ones coming for the other sports, but this is baseball specific. And you're, they're begging for volunteers and you never played baseball before. And it's like, okay, well, you look up something. This is it. It's not that expensive. You know, it's, I, not, you know, it's a, it's, it's reasonably priced. Like you can just have it with you. It's in Kindle format. I'm um, working, it can, it will be paperback and audible eventually, but, you know, this Kindle format could be in your pocket. Right. And it just explains what you're doing, you know, and I'd say what it is drills, how to deal with parents, how to set up your practices, you know, and then what's specific is it has an affirmation at each start to each chapter. Right. Because I start every practice with three deep breaths because at the end of the day, if your breath's out of whack, you know, you're not running well. Like it, yeah. you need fuel for a car to go. Your breath is what powers everything. And then after that comes into your hydration and then into your nutrition. Like, so it obviously, I mean, that's just the physical, obviously it starts right. in the mental and you can bring yourself all the way down, but you don't have a lot of time with kids, even high school coaches. They're primarily doing travel baseball and things like that. So you don't have the time to kind of make sure that they're mentally training right. They're nutritionally mm -hmm. going like this book is a quick, right to the point, all those points. And then also how you can use these affirmations to just like, all right, write these down. So when you're ready to cry, which we all do, and like you're, you're frustrated because you didn't get a hit and maybe inadvertently the coach, you know, you don't, you know, and I, and I know this is a psychological part that we all do and aren't always aware of when we're coaching youth sports is a kid will take a strike. I'm just using baseball as a reference right now or like, you know, misses a goal or lets a goal by whatever sport that it is. This is baseball specific. We might react facially like, oh, you know, like, but yeah. not really realize what that does to a kid when he steps out of, you know, when he steps out of the box and he looks and you, you do that, you're not intentionally, you're just watching the game like everybody hoping that they were successful. But see, if you're sentient about it, you're aware that your feelings and emotions and how you didn't perform in high school and like the things that you did wrong. So, you know, now your kids are going to, you know, do what you didn't do. Yeah. And blah, blah, I've always blah. had a problem with poker face. Yeah. I ain't never had one. Yeah. I've so always had a problem with that. Yeah. I was the guy laughing like in boot camp mm -hmm. in the mill. I used to get beat. Yeah. Cause I was always laughing. You yeah. Know, somebody <laughs> else's. Oh, like, ha. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> right. 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 So, you know, these, you know, so when that that happens, how do you deal with the different types of personalities, right? right. Like some kids need to be directed. Some kids need, don't want the positive, don't, you know, want the positives and they just want you to go along. So that's what this book entails. You know, it's just a real quick read, super easy read, you know, to just be like, I have no what to do with these kids. I have, you know, and then we're going to be at games and parents expect you to, you know, for you know nothing, you know, here. And then there'll be some terms in there. That you can just go on. Well, okay, this is what we do, and you can easily get a practice together. So, how long did it take to make or produce this book? Well, you know, I'm kind of always in the state of writing, I guess. Okay, you know, and that's from a humble standpoint. It's just like I have two lives: I have my writing life, and I have my regular life, and it's just like that. They both coincide, just like with my sleeping life. Like, right, those are those <laughs> lives, and you know, that's just a part of it. So, this has always been notes. There'll be second editions, third editions, fourth editions, because you learn consistently um, through this game. And the only way I could ever continue to be a good coach or dad or whatever the case is is realizing I don't know it. You know, I can have knowledge. And I, and I can be good with that, but I have to be ready on a dime to assess new information and possibly change my whole philosophy based upon new information. Absolutely. You know, and I think that's what can really drive humanity forward if we all do that. The only constant in life is change. Gabriel, take me to a personal commercial, please, if you would be 
If you would be so kind, young man. The time is uh, 8.41 a.m. Corey Ingram is here. Good morning to you, Corey Ingram. Corey Ingram is a, he is a native, or a native. Oh, my God. Scratch it up. I thought we couldn't rap. We can't. <laughs> That's only for sound, bro. That's only for sound. I know. Which is dangerous, though. You know, you got to give a give a scratch to some brothers. It was All right. Um, Corey. No, Corey Ingram is uh, he is a Navy veteran as well. Good morning to you, Corey Ingram. All right. Very important. Thursday, the 27th um, of this month from 6 to 8 p.m. is going to be the Youth and Family Resource Fair provided by the Youth or, um the Youth Services Department of the City of Aurora and the Aurora Youth Council. This is a free event, live music by DJ Raul. More than 45 organizations, programs, and activities for youth this summer. Bring the whole family. Free tacos by Primo's Mexican Cuisine while supplies last. Door prizes are a Nintendo Switch bundle, a TV, iPads, gift cards, and more. There will also be performances by Sarah Ramos, APS Training Academy, Nija. Simply Destiny and A Factor, or if, the, or if that's Factor A, Dance Company. So that'll be a humdinger. And not only that, Good Morning Aurora will be there. Yes, yes, this is true. I know what you. I know what you're saying, Curtis. Man, you mean you're actually gonna be? It? Yes, that's right. I'll be over there. You know, I'll be chilling out. We'll be doing the news that night. So it'll be. That's gonna be another one. There. At the thing, doing the news. It's going to be, be like, come on, man. It's going to be like, ABC, what? Keep going. Absolutely. All right. And then the next thing I want to tell you guys about, I have, aha. Uh-huh. Um, so next week, Tuesday of next week on the 18th from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., uh, our friends of NAMI and Family Focus are having a mental health discussion. Join to talk about the stigmas of mental health, where you can get help, and the science to look out for. This will be at 552nd Avenue in Aurora. Um, once again, Tuesday, April 18th, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. I will be there in the flesh. I hope to see you, too. If you come there, I'll tell you what. I want full participation. If you come there, I'll take a selfie with you. But it. you got to mention this this episode Hashtag. and remind me. So don't just come up there like, yo, yeah. like, oh, who are you, dog? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Time is um, 8.43 a.m. Ginger Gallagher is here. Nancy Fuentes. Josie Mendoza Geller is here as well. Zora Zapata. Good morning to all of you great and wonderful people. Um, so we, um, the, the writing, and I just want to touch on this just for a couple minutes. Um, mm-hmm. The writing process, though. Now, you've. You've created the audio book. Mm-hmm. Now, this is on Kindle. Yes. And then, but we got plans to make it a paperback. Yes. It, you know, once you get finished and you go through the process of turning it in and they go. Turning you know, it into a publisher. Well, this one I did myself. Okay. So I published my first book uh, with Page Publishing that's still, I, I still use and they've been fantastic um, from New York. Uh, and then... They do a great job, but a lot of these uh, processes have become more intuitive and then leveraging the technology. I mean, I'm not sitting there scrolling all the time, you right. know, looking at, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to gather this knowledge. I knew as soon as I got an iPhone, you know, back in the day, I'm like, man, this is, this is E equals MC squared in my pocket, mm-hmm. you know? And it's like thinking of the Wayne song, like making million dollar deals from my iPhone. Like mm-hmm. when I had a flip phone thinking that's, yup, I'm about to do that. You know what I mean? And, you know, I, I, that whole process is very inspired. There's days I don't want to write and I don't, you know, and there's, there's days I don't, you know, and there's days I do. And it's just, I don't want to be a hype about it. You know, I only, I, I do it, you know, a lot of people like to go sit at Starbucks and, well, I'm a writer and like, I do these things like, all right, man, like, great. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm great. I, I don't want to be a hype about it because there has to be like in this collective intelligence, like we're all feeding knowledge into whatever we live in this reality you know which is heavy in cause and effect right you know i mean we we all want to deny cause and effect i you know we can how good can we justify things and that's what holds me accountable because literally if i don't i know when stuff starts going the wrong way and come back to writing or 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 working out or whatever or not being in nature enough not being out Mm-hmm. you know uh, absorbing what we're supposed to do here because come on i mean it's more than you it's it's more than some social hierarchy right. structure of a of, of accumulating goods 
you know, or just like getting the house or getting the cars or like, you know, like the, the things that are happening around this world. Like I say this all the time. We, we want things to be better. We want things to be fair. But like within this sphere, one side of the world, people are dying from eating too much. And on the other side of the world, people are dying from not having enough. Like, oh, yeah. Well, well, what what higher power is going to help us unless you figure that out? <laughs> yeah, I've like, been. Um, no, seriously. Since my dad passed away, my, I, the, 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 the futility of it all. I mean, it's never been more transparent. Yeah. They're, like there is no fairness. There's no. Fu- it's all. Well, it, it's just it's I think regard. I think we have to all get out of this idea of. Of fairness, because like whenever we face judgment from whatever anyone believes, like mm-hmm. we don't need fairness, we need grace. True. Like you know what I'm saying. So like right now, as a species, as a you know, as a collective society, because we could doubt each, we could say we're different in whatever ways, but at the end of the day, there's books out there that you know call us sapiens and Homo sapiens, and like mm-hmm. you know dehumanize us to a certain extent, and it's just like that's not how we really are. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, we are not like that. We do not want to see other people fail. We do not want to see certain people held down. We don't want that. And and I'm sorry, this is our generation. This is our time to at least say we don't want that. Right. We, we don't. We want our kids to grow up. We want people to have the best. We want the best people in the best jobs that they deserve because they worked hard to get there. And all these things that have happened leading up to it need to be addressed, need to be talked to. And then... Why? Why shouldn't we have a good life? Time is 8.47 a.m. You're listening to and watching Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. It's Friday. I hope that you guys are having a great time over there, wherever you're at, whether you're at home or in the office. Close your door. You know, don't let nobody interrupt your peace while you're listening to Good Morning Aurora and all that. Hey, Sally, you got the files ready for the... Yeah, yeah. We're just waiting to see if these dudes rap. Oh, right. never mind. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's 848. Um, Mary Ann... Kennedy is here. Good morning, Mary Ann Kennedy. Um, so for those who don't know, um, and there's a few people who do know, so Salvatore Hall here is uh he has an integral part to play in the foundation and the beginnings of Good Morning Aurora. Salvatore here was around be- when there was no Good Morning Aurora. He remembers when there was no he wasn't it wasn't not a thing for very long. No. Nope. <laughs> it, it, that spark, man. When you had that spark and you said it to me, I was like that that's a good idea and yep. this is where we were sitting the world was so, so ahead, yeah yeah um so i'll give you guys a, a brief uh history lesson here real quick so here's here's the story now this it's it's a long story we don't have enough time for it but i'm gonna give you the condensed version um so salvatore was working for a nursing home a, mm-hmm. an assisted living home yep. um i was interning for Rep Hernandez at the time, I was on the Veterans Council, and I think we still had the escape room. This is before the, yeah, no, this is when the pandemic. Just, it was like just started. Just the pandemic just started. just started. Yeah, the like pandemic literally. just started. Yep, and everything started shutting down. Yeah, so I think I don't think I was unemployed yet, no. but it wasn't long after this that I I lost my job. Um, but uh, what happened was was that Salvatore reached out because he was doing the the social media for this assisted living home. He hit the Instagram of the organization I was with, and he was like, yo, want to put some things together, want to see what's going on, do this, and see if we can just work with organizations, blah, blah, blah. So I replied back, and then he set up a Zoom call. I was early on the Zoom. He was early on the Zoom, and then we just started talking and hit it off. I was like, yo, this dude is cool, man. (laughs) I was like, yo, check this guy out. Yeah, yeah. Then the Zoom call happened, Mm -hmm. all the big wigs and big shots got on it Mm -hmm. and we just did our professional thing but we stayed in touch after that um and then you were doing those bi-weekly or something you had there was a schedule to it he was doing so i would always tune in to his meetings but then we hooked up on the side we started talking just doing our thing and we came to the under the understanding that like because everybody thought covid was going to be a couple months yeah remember yeah you were talking that oh you know in six months when it's all over yeah well, we we both were like minded, and we saw that if we can make something now, if we can plant the seed now, when the world comes back open, right, we'll start. And remember, we were talking about senior rides, and we were gonna get yo. We'll see if the city can pay for the shuttle bus, and yep. then boom, 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 we're gonna bring them down. I got information for the veterans. You yep. got this. You got the um. 
assisted living things. Yep. We'll do a workshop for the seniors and veterans. Yep. That fell out. Yep. We'll do a senior daycare. That didn't work. Yeah. So then I was like, yo, man, I'm thinking of starting this podcast. I think I'm going to start the show called Good Morning. You were like, yo, <laughs> word. Let's go. Yep. And yeah. then so Salvatore was the very first everything for Good Morning. He was the first person I interviewed because how it happened was you started at 9 o'clock. Yep. He started at 9 o'clock. So I would do news from 8 to 8.30, and then we would Zoom call. Yep. From eight thirty to nine, you hear and the I birds would talk in the background. <laughs> I'd be outside. He would be outside of his car, <laughs> waiting to go inside of his job, and I would be like, "All right, now let's talk to our boy Salvatore. Sal, what's going on there?" And we just be child, man. You should go back and listen to that. There'd be some wild, and that's, a lot yep. of predictions that that's, came through. That's how, and I was in my bathroom. Mm-hmm. That's how it all started. And here we are. That's man. how it all started, and then, um, but that was short lived because, and I, and I, again. You grow, you get more mature, you understand everything. In retrospect, looking back at it now, in retrospect, that really kind of was short-lived because you were late. I was making you late. You know what I'm saying? Like kind of yeah. like every day. It was we were we were really we were tiptoeing around the confines that we were in at that moment. Absolutely. We were tiptoeing around the confines that we were in at that moment because I mean, the reality of it and we were having fun doing it. We were. But the reality that smacked us both in the face when it take care of yourself and each other. When it ended, you had to go to work. Yep. Of which, you know, I'm a, they unfortunately yeah, let yeah, you go. Yeah. And I was unemployed. Yep. Reality came right back in the face. That's right. I was 36 years old with no job. Right. Hey yo, and we had you know, and, I, and 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 we and were so, talking. I'm in. T- you know what I mean? We were we we've been. I mean, that's why we were connecting now because, I mean, remember a couple of those conversations? I was in the same thing. Like, just yep. like, yo, man, like, I can't believe this. I can't believe these things that happen. Exactly. Like, man, but I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to give up. I don't care. I'm not giving up my right. my convictions, my morals. Like, what that's what was happening. You never did. You nah, never man. did. No, nah, no. And I remember you telling me about, the, and, that, and I remember the book. Mm-hmm. I remember the book. Because yeah. I, remember, I, tell, I remember telling you, like, yo, I started trying to write a book, and I remember that's also what latched because I was like, "Yo, this dude wrote a book." Yeah, no doubt. I was like, "This dude wrote a book. He's working for an assisted living thing." I was like, "Yo, this dude is." I was like, "Who is this dude, Salvatore Hall?" Yeah, man. Besides the fact you were a coach, yeah. so that was and and I and I'm glad that uh, I'm I'm glad that well, two things I'm glad about. A, I'm glad that you didn't quit. Thanks. Yeah, I'm glad you didn't either, man. <laughs> Glad, yeah, man. Glad you didn't quit, man. Thanks. And and I'm glad that you took the lemon that they gave you, and you made Tropicana out of that. Okay, right, man. And you got made a brand new and dropped the second out, second right. book. That's right. So yeah. no, I appreciate that. And then the other aspect of it too that's very important that for you guys to know in the history. And if Oprah ever interviews me or when I get my my big moment, I'll tell the story in full detail. But um, besides interviewing friends. Right. I was always looking for my big interview. The person who we interviewed, who was our very first serious interview, the one that put us on the map, the interview that made us be looked at like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, they're not playing. Right. They interviewed so- Sheriff Ron Hain. It was Paul. Sheriff Ron Hain was the very first person who sat down with us in an interview. In a very, very tense time. In a tense time. Very In a basement time. that was dark yep. and was very suspicious looking. I mean, it really was. I mean, it was and super he, but shady. He, it was the shadiest. There's never been a shadier he, oh, for, anything. And he was nothing but, I mean, you can't say it good enough. And we, you know, I mean, yep. watch that interview. Go back and look yep. at that interview because it was, it was very real. Yep. He, we asked questions and he answered them. Yep. And that and interview. And that interview is what put us on the map. Yeah, man. That's what made us. That's what made us be looked at like, oh, okay, these dudes aren't playing. Yeah, no, these dudes are not playing. Well, it, there's there's nothing to gain from prideful arrogance, right? Right. There's just nothing to be gained for it. All every single problem that's plaguing us literally comes from some level of greed and wanting to hold knowledge or hold, 
you know, hold the power away from somebody else. Right. And and, and it, it's bigger than, I feel it's bigger than race. I feel it's bigger than gender. I feel it's way bigger than that. I mean, it might even be way bigger. It might be cosmic. Right. You know what I'm saying? But, like, at the end of the day, none of it matters. The second we realize that, like, how you interact with the person you love the most is the same as that person that you wouldn't even, you don't even want to make eye contact with. Like, mm-hmm. something about that, that, or it's like when your boss understood what you were feeling. It's because we did connect up there. Like, there right. is something more than what we see. I don't know what it is. And nor, because I can't hear your inner monologue, you can't hear my inner monologue. So for me to try to figure out or, or make you think the way I think is in, is impossible or, and shouldn't is, is something that needs to be stopped in our society. Like, dude, you can't hear. You don't know what they call God or not God, or, or they might not believe in anything. But, like, none of that gives you a reason to question how they view the world or, right. or view their connection. But that's plagued humanity through the existence of humanity on this planet, to be honest, right? I mm-hmm. mean, it's just a level of, like, okay, we build false idols and then fall. It's like we build false idols and fall. It's like, okay, when are we going to stop? Like, when are we going to just realize, like, yo, look at the green grass. Look at all this food. Look at all these things right. that we have here. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's enough. The pie is big enough. And the oh, yeah. subtle differences. Oh, yeah. You know? That's what's so, it's been uh, interesting. We, you know, there's been people from time to time, uh, you know, like, you're like uh, yo, man, like, the show's cool, but, like, you know, you're talking about mammogram screening and all that. You're talking about, uh, you know, getting your blood donated. Are you sure people want to hear that? And that's what I'm just like, you know what, maybe. Because they not, it's not for them. Right. If I got to explain it to you, it's like Wu-Tang. Right. Right. Right? I don't understand what they're saying. It's not for you. That's right. why, That's why you don't. I, I take that. It's been so easy for me to just kind of swipe that, right? Mm-hmm. Just swipe that away. Well, like, because, because you understand it's because mm-hmm. it's not about us i know it's not about me it's, it's about not. you right or me right it's about you i happen to be a a pretty healthy young brother mm-hmm. i need you to get your glucose screening right i vote you don't i need you to vote. you know what i'm and saying but I the need thing is, is why don't give reason. that up you that might be the only voice a lot of people hear of right. that because like you know they say a lot of our problems are genetic but it might be but it's also could be generational of like True. well right You've been eating these types of oils. You've been cooking with you know, everyone's, you know, for generations have cooked these types of oils or or at, eat these types of food. Well, yeah, maybe the same diseases are going that. But by simply checking it and then they mm-hmm. see a brochure that's there by some other nonprofit that's like, hey, you know, I've seen even cooking classes that they've been offering, you know, and that's what I want to do, if you know, going into if I go into an election cycle next year. But they, you know, to have those types of you know, understanding how you can heal yourself, understanding how, you know, you can get healthier and use the resources that are available. Mm-hmm. So, you know, don't, and again, you know, the haters in the back. I right. mean, that's always, it's always how it haters goes. Haters gonna hate. Yeah. Love us wanna <laughs> love. I don't even want none of the, uh, Stacy Shramick Linden. Good morning to you as well. The time is 8.59 a.m. Well, this is the end of the show uh well i guess we just realized you need another part for three um, four yeah. all that man so you gotta <laughs> we're gonna have you back man um before we got to here where can folks find the book sentient coaching absolutely uh the easiest place and central is on amazon you can search salvatore hall uh, or you can search sentient coaching if you wanted to find the audiobook of 24 rungs an ASMR journey to recovery or pass that along. It's also a, a a subtle way to some people who are struggling. You can send them the book and it's not really uh, related to any type of substance. That's on Audible, Spotify, Apple, Google Play. Enjoy. All right. All right. Well, uh, hope that you guys have a great day, a great weekend. Um, I'm very appreciative for today's discussion. Appreciate to have our friend Salvatore back with us. Um, thank you for all of you people who watch the show and subscribe to the show. It means a lot. If you are not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do. We need we need 593 more subscribers please, so we can hit our goal of 1,000. Please help us hit that goal. If you're listening to Sound of My Voice, you are not subscribed. Go to your YouTube right now. Do it. Curtis, I'm going to do it. Type in good morning and hit the boop. Subscribe. Do that. Do it all. 
Be blessed. Take care of yourself and each other. That's right. Thank you.